Ben beni bilmezdim hatır kırardım Meğer ilmim oksan imiş bilmedim Ben insandan başka ilah arardım Meğer ilah insan imiş bilmedim Yeah, I really like that poem as well. It's very obvious what he's saying. Not necessarily hidden behind a lot of metaphor. Well, there's a word, for example, that Alevis talk about turab, turab olma, which in some way sort of means like uh, to be humble, uh, is, is I guess one interpretation. Another interpretation of that word is to be like low, to be as low as the earth, if you like. And again, it's this idea of connecting with something that is a part of nature, connecting with earth, connecting with the earth. The overall theme, I think, is a bit about this, of lowering the ego, bring it down to earth. And it comes from understanding yourself. Like, ben beni bilmezdim, hatır kırardım. Meğer ilmim noksan imiş bilmedim. You know, you know the, the sort of, the old sort of Socratic phrase, if there's one thing I know, it, it, it is that I know nothing, right? Daimi Baba's saying, I was hurting people because I, I wasn't aware of how little I knew. And that, that's sort of a part of the, the sort of, the individual's ego sort of try to, in some way, destroy. Or it naturally dissolving. Tüm variler gibi sahralar gibi Asra dağlar gibi yaylalar gibi Akan sular gibi deryalar gibi Cümle alem bir can imiş bilmedim The fact that we are conscious gives us the illusion of this special tea. And, and of course, like the, you know, we are different to, to the rest of the animal and plant kingdom. We're sort of, you know, the universe's way of being conscious of itself. That is a key, sort of key difference. And it's not difficult to sort of see that. But fundamentally, the, you know, the, the building blocks are the same, from rivers to, to mountains, compounds the same elements. There is a sort of um, interesting aspect well, interesting part of society where when we talk about these quite remarkable characteristics of various animals and, and things in nature, people are sort of, they're sort of astonished by it, right? But in, in a sense, it's not astonishing at all. It's nature. It, it was sort of there way before us. But it's remarkable because we get stuck in ourselves or we get stuck in our own perspective. You know, this is, this is the thing, right? We, have a, we, have a, we do have a perspective on, on the world and, and that can tunnel vision us on, on things and that there is all this other stuff going on which which is as remarkable as we are. Daimiyem benliğime kanardım Ben beni bilmezdim eli kınardım Kişi kendime düşman sanardım Nefsim bana düşman imiş bilmedim Nefis is, it's not necessarily desires, it's not like your wants and needs. It's an aspect of the ego, wanting things which ultimately are harmful to someone. Or in, in more common cultures, you, you'll sort of ascribe it to like the good and bad within you. Me as an elderly, I, I don't think there is such a thing as an absolute morality of like absolute good and bad. I think it's very contextual. But there are things that are ultimately going to be harmful to someone. Uh, like a, a habit of yours can ultimately be uh, harming you, even if it may seem like something that gives you joy initially. It is ultimately a sort of a harmful trait. There's loads of examples in, in sort of modern day society, whether it be like uh, addiction, like addiction to, to chemicals or addiction to habits or addiction to particular actions. Alevism is about going out into the world and interacting. Um, but there's this bit of introspection. Right? There's always going to be a bit of introspection. And this comes from realizing yourself, like what you are. That's what he's saying. Very simply, he's saying you can put blame on other people, um, but never realize that it's your own actions that, that put you in that situation. If you're always making friends or having intimate relationships with people that ultimately harm you, there is something about yourself that is seeking that sort of destructive uh, character. Like you're, you're the one in control of that situation, is what he's 
sort of saying if, if we want to sort of simplify it, right? Ben insandan başka ilah arardım. Meğer ilah insan imiş bilmedim. I think that's that's the best part of the poem, right? Ilah meaning like a, a hope, like a, a god. That's a key part of Alevi philosophy, right? What he's saying there is an el haq, thousands of years of of an of an idea. God is me. I am God. You know? I find it interesting how when you look at similar things about like what God is, you'll have someone like Spinoza who attributes God to the universe. This is the main thing why I guess within the geographies we've lived in, Alevis have been persecuted so much, right? The most blasphemous thing you could say is that you are equivalent to God, this all-powerful, omnipresent, omnipotent entity. Everyone may have some part of the Alevi faith which they quite like. It might be the music, it might be particular figures in its history, it might be particular places that they visit in Anatolia or in Turkey, but in terms of a single key idea, it is really this, placing you in the, the sort of seat of, of creation. It has a bit of a contradictory element. On the one hand, like you are a part of this universe, right? The other side of it, it's like you're saying, well, you're also equivalent to God. Sort of two sides of the same coin. So this contradiction is like a Hegelian contradiction where like when taken to its extreme, it's actually the same thing. Like to put you into the place of God is to sort of connect you to the rest of the universe and make you realize your place within the universe. It's not to take you out of it, it's to sort of really cement your place as a part of it. But simply, if there is anything that is going to be given this title of God, it should be you. Um, like someone who's not just important for us because of a similarity in ideas, but who's instrumental, I think, to the history of philosophy is, is like uh, Spinoza, is Barak Spinoza, who had a very difficult life because, again, he was saying something that was opposed to what the church was espousing at the time. The fact that God is the universe is, is what he was uh, talking about. And there's a, there's a reason why it's very close to us, because it's, it's kind of saying the same thing. Um, but it's also kind of getting rid of the, the external influence on your life. It's removing that, and, and that's what Alevism does as well. It removes, or it tries to remove, the the fear that you should feel for for an external influence, and that it's upon your actions, and it's you understanding your own ego and your own uh, faults that can lead to a deep and satisfying life. Another example of like someone who talks about God within the context of, of religion is, of course, like Nietzsche. Right? Nietzsche famously says God is dead, and, and we have killed him. That, for example, is in reference to the Enlightenment and what the Enlightenment represented. And some people in sociology don't actually like using the word Enlightenment because it's sort of maybe a bit normative or like it adds like a positive connotation. But you've got to un understand that within the context of the hegemony of, of religion, the Enlightenment is, is a break from that. But the sort of key part of this is how the, the prevalence of rationality, of science, uh, destroys the, the, the need for God in those spaces. Um, and in that context, you kill God, right? For us, it's a similar thing of we're getting rid of the need of that God, placing it on ourselves. That is the sort of core element of, of Alevism that, that Daimi Baba is capturing in, in the, the first verse of this poem. He's saying, my fault, right, was to search for holy in something else. And then in the second verse, he's saying, just look at the deserts, uh, the rivers, that everything was the same and I hadn't realised. It's always saying something like, I hadn't realised, I, I got it wrong. And that is the sort of teaching the humility or, or the philosophy of Alevism.